good morning from a cold western cape and to you there in the northern hemisphere enjoy the summer i'm jealous of you now let's get started last week we learned that adam committed high treason that is he sold out to satan but that's all is not lost because jesus came and he made a way so now let us continue let's look again at romans 5 verse 17 it says for if because of one man's trespass, his lapse or offense, death reigned through that one. They're talking about Adam here. Much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself, reign as kings in life. Through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Now, we will see it says here, reign as kings in life. Through the one, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. I want you to underline that part. Reign as kings in life. See, God's plan for us was that we rule and reign in life as kings. To rule and reign over circumstances, poverty, disease, and everything else that may hinder us. We reign because we have authority. We reign by and through Jesus, not of our own strength or our own goodness or anything of that sort. Now, some people say, no, but we will reign in the next life. No, that's not what the word says here. It doesn't say in the afterlife. It says in life. We will reign as kings in life. Now, we need to start lining up our words, our songs, our thoughts and living with that of what the Word says. So easily we, we sing, um, standing somewhere in the shadows you'll find Jesus. I, I can't agree with that one. Because Jesus is light. There cannot be shadow around Him. And then... Another thing we like to say is, oh, this headache is killing me. Think of what you're saying. See, for too long, we have allowed anyone to simply feed us with anything. And we readily accept it. Because, you know, oh, we like this person. He's so nice, you know. We just love him or her. But then we cannot understand why things are in turmoil around us or in our lives, make sure that which you listen to and that what you accept lines up with the word. And if it does not, run. Don't put yourself in a position where you are under the authority or under the spirit that rules in another man's house. Be careful of what you allow. Now, another thing that we simply just accept or we have our own idea of is poverty versus humility many people have the idea that um, if you are poor you are humble that's got absolutely nothing to do with it you can be poor and be very arrogant as well and it can be the other way around God intended no, sorry God did not intend for us to live a life that is poverty stricken. Believers have allowed the devil to cheat them out of every blessing they could enjoy by believing some things. We are to reign as kings, not so. That's what the word said. Now, does the idea of poverty line up with a king? I don't think so, and I'm sure you will agree with me. Now, as Christians, we need to accept and learn that we are seated with Christ. We must learn to be exalted to the place where God wants us. Not where man wants us, where God wants us. And the church falls miserably in this area. Instead, she's bowed down in defeat and is overcome with fear. Listen to the, the words, the conversations of many Christians. I'm not talking about denominations. I'm talking about children of God. They say they are children of God, but they are overcome with fear. And the word says he hasn't given us a spirit of fear. 
It's because we do not know who we are in Christ. Now Ephesians 1.22 says, And hath put all things under his, that is Jesus' feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Now Jesus is head over sickness, disease, and everything else that is evil. He proved this while he walked this earth. Now, God made Jesus to be the head over all things to the church. It is for our sake that he is the head, so that we, through him, might exercise authority over all things. When we understand what belongs to us, we will enjoy the victory that Christ has obtained for us. In Colossians 1 verse 15 to 20, Paul is writing to the church at Colossae, and though he uses different wording, he says the same things that he said to the Ephesians about God's plan of redemption. Now let us look in Colossians 2 verse 12 to 15. Verse 12, it says, Buried with him, underline that, in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him, underline that, through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Underline that through, boldly. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Now, verse 12 says that we were raised with Christ through the faith operation of God. Verse 13 says that not only were we quickened at the same time that he quickened Christ, but he also forgave our sins. When Jesus, the righteous, yielded to death, the debt of sin against us was paid. Paid in full. There's not one cent owing. It's, it's zero, zero, zero. That's the account. Zero. Paul is saying to the Colossians that it was God who formed the plan of salvation. It was God who raised Jesus from the dead. It was God who gave him a name above every other name. It was God who spilled the demonic powers and principalities who opposed the resurrection of Christ. See, death is the penalty for sin, whether we like it or not. When Christ bore the guilt of the world at the cross, when he took the sin upon him, the satanic powers sought to exercise their rights and to hold him under their power. You see, Satan had the keys of death, which was surrendered to him by Adam when he committed high treason. But Jesus conquered Satan. In Revelation 1 verse 18 he says, I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Jesus took the keys from the devil. Keys belong to the authorized one. Those are the keys of authority. Remember, death is still an enemy. Physical death is not of God, it is of the enemy. It was never part of God's plan. But the Bible says that it is the last enemy that will be put underfoot or that will be conquered. We will not live forever in this fleshly body. When Jesus comes, it will be changed. It will become immortal. Isn't that wonderful? In verse 15 of Colossians 2, it says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Now, just as in Ephesians, Paul here refers to the fact that Jesus was elevated above his enemies to the right hand of the Father, which is the place of authority. Again, Paul stresses the Father's work in the overthrow of the satanic powers and the defeat of Satan. We saw in Ephesians 
that Jesus is seated on the throne at the right hand of the Father. So he has the authority of the throne of God. Now it is here that the church has failed. It understands that Christ is the supreme head of the church. But sadly it has failed to understand that one, the head, is totally dependent on the body for carrying out his plans. Two, that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And three, and that his exercising authority over the powers of the air has to be done through the body. We have authority and heaven will back us up on what we refuse and what we allow. We have allowed many things, but we haven't used our authority. That is why things are as they are. The world is in the state it's in because the church is in the state it's in. We are waiting on God to do something. And all the while, He's waiting on us. And He won't do anything until we act. He has given us the authority. And He can only back us once we use and exercise that authority. If we want to get things done, we need to appreciate the meaning of Christ's exaltation and the fact that we are seated with Him at the right hand of the Father. We, you and I, we have a part to play in this. We must cooperate with the Lord in faith. So, let us then start taking the word for what it is. So many people want to take the word and say, uh, um, this is how I understand it. Or this is what I think it should say. Let's forget about the interpretation of a professor, a doctor, a president, or whatever. Whoever he calls himself, apostle, prophet, whatever he wants to call himself. And let the Holy Spirit show you. You see, God says what he means. And he means what he says. Let us take him at his word and forget about what man thinks can and cannot be done. You see, when, when we think or, or are affected by what man thinks, what can and cannot be done, Nothing will be done. Because when you tell man about the goodness and the glory of God, he cannot comprehend it. Our minds are too small to really understand the depth and the breadth and the height of God. God himself says nothing is impossible for him. And now we want to be uh, um, affected by what man says. We want what man says to affect us. Man puts God in a box and says, oh no, 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 you know, it's impossible, it cannot be done. But this is where I want to stress this morning, let's forget what man thinks and take God's word, take him at his word and stand on it and say, I don't care what even if the whole world says it cannot be done. God says he is the God of the impossible. And we stand with God. When you stand with God, you will overcome. Next week we will carry on with this. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus we come to you. And we ask, Lord, we fail to understand your greatness. But Lord, we do not need to understand we just need to accept that you are great and that you do wondrous things. And Father, help us to take you at your word, not to try to understand it, but just to accept it and say, I know God's word is true. For Lord, you yourself said that the heavens and the earth shall pass away, but your word will stand firm forever. So help us, Father, to stand on your word, even though the heavens and the earth may shake, that your word, it will stand, and we will stand on your word. Father, help us realize who we are in Christ, what you have done for us through Jesus Christ, and that the enemy is a defeated foe, that he no longer has the power over us. But Lord, we allow him so many things. Help us to realize that which we allow, 
you are going to allow. For you have given us the authority. And Father, this morning we come and we pray and say, Father, help us that we will not allow the enemy the most minuscule foothold in our life. Not in any area of our life and that of our families, but that we will reign over him and that we will exercise our authority over him through Jesus who is seated at your right hand. We give you honor and praise, Lord, for this great thing that you have done for us. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your great love. Love that we cannot begin to understand. But help us just to accept that which you have done and to use and to take that which you have given us and to exercise the authority to the honor and glory of your precious holy name. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now while you go and have a wonderful week and stay warm. God bless.